My name is indeed Mark Forrest. And uh, very briefly, I would like to give you an idea as to why Eucharistic Adoration is so important for us to continue to check in spiritually in our lives of what Christ has planned for us. As many of you know, I'm the father of eight boys. I was born and raised in Dublin, Ireland. I came to the United States on a scholarship with Cardinal Hickey. Cardinal Hickey gave me a scholarship to go to Catholic University, where I did my undergraduate degree in musical theater, a master's in liturgical music. I have a degree in international marketing and a minor in human resource management. But at the end of the day, people really don't care. All they want to know is, do you sing Danny Boyer, do you not? It's a long time to spend in college just for that, I can tell you. Anyway, I uh, married my high school sweetheart, and very briefly, I am indeed the father of eight boys. And my first child, perfectly healthy. My second child, as many of you know, was born with a very rare metabolic disease, a disease that had left him blind and deaf all his life. God called him home August 16, two years ago. After 22 years of being in the presence of a saint, and I say that because although John did not speak and John did not hear, if ever you have received a hug from a child with Down syndrome, I believe that you've received Christ in a very tangible, special way. I lived with that with John. I have another gentleman, Connor. Connor is 6'6", perfectly healthy. I have Anthony. Anthony is 22 perfectly healthy, 6'4". Joseph Michael. I also had Francesco. And Francesco at the 20-week sonogram was diagnosed with a right hypoplastic heart, a disease of the heart that was not related to the metabolic disease of John Patrick. On the 12th of August in 1997, Francesco was put on a life support machine. He was getting ready for the operation when the doctors came in and told us that there was nothing that they could do. Both my wife and I were faced with the daunting task of taking our son off life support. Before we did, we of course had mass and uh, mass of the angels for him. We brought him home and he died in our arms six days later. Again, it was one of the lowest moments in my life. I have Joseph Michael. Joseph Michael is 17 years old. Six months after he was born, he was diagnosed with the same metabolic disease as John Patrick. He too is blind, deaf, confined to a wheelchair. Great kid, please keep him in your prayer. I have Declan, Declan is 12. Declan has got more energy than all of you combined in this room tonight. If you have one of those children, I've got one. And there are days I threaten to put him into a wheelchair, <laughs> as only a father can do. And then I have great kid, a sports fanatic, great kid. And then I have Peter. Peter is 10, and two days after he was born, wasn't he diagnosed with the same metabolic disease? He too is blind, deaf, confined to a wheelchair. Now, why do I share this with you very quickly? Because a lot of you have heard the story before. But I want you to know that in the most difficult times of your own personal life, there's that beautiful poem of Footprints in the Sand. And today, I am probably more qualified to talk as a parent of special needs children than any of the qualifications that I listed earlier on. Today, God has brought me into the world of special needs. And I'd like to thank, in a very, very special way, my dear friend, Eustace. Eustace and I go back a long way. And when I had spoken about being a part of a foundation to help children with special needs, I want to let you know that he was there from the very beginning. Icona Resorts, his whole family, and uh, I'm just grateful for his support. But I want to let you know what happens when Christ, when you are willing to let Christ into your life, what he can do for you. I thought I'd entertain the world and travel the world doing Danny Boy, you raised me up. But God had a total different plan. And I'm happy to say he set up the foundation, Faith and Family Foundation. We serve 110 children a week. And I'd like to just run the video. It's a two-minute video of how far the foundation has come. And I want to thank you for your prayers and support. But it truly is a testimony, not to what myself and my wife did. It is a testimony of what Christ can do when you let go. Don't be afraid of your cross. Embrace the cross. 
And I promise you, when you embrace that cross, you'll be able to inspire other people to be a part of the world of evangelization. I was asked earlier on today, what was the most important thing about this particular day? What is so wonderful about it is that no one can ever tell me that the church is in trouble. Why? Because it is alive with men, a great priests. The amount of priests here, phenomenal. And I'm just so grateful for the gift that the priests give us. I always pray for vocations during the holy hour because we must understand that without our priests, we do not get the Eucharist, which is the most important part of our Catholic faith. It is the most intimate relationship that we can have with Jesus is the Eucharist itself. So I ask you to continue to pray for our priests. If you feel that the Lord is calling you to the priesthood, please seek out a priest and ask him about his world. All of the ministries, the different tables up there, the church is alive. And whatever difficulties you might hear about, they will never be the excuse as to why not to connect to be a part of the body of Christ. Don't allow less than 1% of any institution take you away from the 99% of Christ calling you every day. You can turn it up, that's great. But Danny Boy, the pipes. Swear. 